So this is how I feel when I go to Burning Man. I'm so excited. I just, the, there's so many possibilities. Anything can happen. And if I could do that, I would. Cultural collaboration. Bringing together different cultures to build stronger, more vibrant communities. So I work for Burning Man, which means when I tell people this, they either go, really? Or they go, really? Over 65,000 people come from all over the world to this phenomenal event. And they come for the art, but they come back for the community. Based on 10 principles, some of which are everyone's welcome, radical self-reliance, you have to be able to live on the desert for a week. But that said, people will help you. If you're tired, if you're hungry, if you're thirsty, our community shares and will take care of you. Radical self-expression. You all have seen the amazing art, but then there's also the quiet little pieces that are out in deep playa and you're pedaling your bike by and you go, is that a ceramic brain? Those are all treasures. And then there are the creative costumes. You have people on stilts wearing clown suits. You have pirates. You have people in tutus. You have people in red dresses. Then there's the community. The community has to work together to build all these things. To build the sculptures, to build the theme camps, to build the city itself. It's community and collaboration. Black Rock City is the fifth largest city in Nevada for one week out of the year. And when the event's over, we go away and we leave no trace. Imagine a world where we could live like this every day. The Burning Man project was created to bring the ethos of Burning Man out into the world. In 2008, Crimson Rose, one of the founders, and I, with the support of the Black Rock Arts Foundation, decided to bring the art of Burning Man to an empty lot in downtown Reno. We started with the Mangrove Project, which was a small project. It consisted of 11 trees made out of recycled materials um, created by five different artists' collectives. It was small, it was easy to install, it was inexpensive, but best of all, it was temporary. It was only going to be there for three months. So the city actually supported the project. But burners being burners, someone said, hey, can we play some music in the mangrove? And I said, sure, why not? And so all of a sudden, spontaneously on Sundays, we had music in the mangrove. We had live music. We had people dancing. We had families. We had people hula hooping. And then the citizens of Reno that were walking by came and joined us. They asked us questions about the art, about the culture. And we shared, and everybody had a great time. The next year, we went larger. This is Celtic Forest, and we brought fire and metal art to downtown Reno. Now we were really giving a taste of Burning Man. And we participated in Reno's month-long art festival, Art Town. So this time we had programming, we had DJs, we had fire spinners, we had hula hoop jams, we had live music. And the citizens of Reno really started to see what Burning Man was all about. It wasn't this scary thing that was out in the desert. So we were sharing our culture. Okay, now this one was a little challenging. This is Spire of Fire. It was 48 feet tall. It had fire on five levels that was participant-driven. So it was interactive, giant metal art on fire. I mean, this was Burning Man in downtown Reno. So the participants were able to actually interact by pun uh, pressing buttons that would actually control the fire. This was challenging because um, we had to work with many of the city agencies. So we had to work with the building department because the sculpture was so tall. We had to work with the fire department because it looked a little dangerous. Um, we had to work with the police department because uh, as people were driving by, they would see the fire and they'd not look at the pedestrians in the crosswalk. And so I ended up sending out volunteers that were, of course, dressed in costume to direct traffic. 
we really had to build, we had to gain trust from the city with this sculpture, because we had to prove that we could do it and that it would be safe, and that people would love it. And people did love it. People came from all over town when they'd see that fire going up. So we went from hundreds of people in the mangrove to thousands of people enjoying Spire of Fire. We also want a place permanent in art. This is Guardian of Eden by Kate Rowdenbush. It was on the playa, and then it was supposed to come to the museum for three months. Again, temporary. But the community really loved it, and we happened to have a new executive director who understood how important this relationship between Burning Man and this international level of art and emerging artists and established artists and the city of Reno, who were saying, "Hey, we love this sculpture," and the Nevada Museum of Art. So he actually found somebody to purchase the sculpture, and this became the first Burning Man sculpture. To become part of a museum's permanent collection. This is Tabasco and the Iron Monkeys and Tree Spire. Tree Spire was one of the、um, trees that was in the mangrove. We have many, many parks in Reno that need art. We have many, many parks all over the world that need art. It took us about a year and a half working with the Neighborhood Advisory Board and the Arts and Culture Commission to place this tree permanently in a park. One of my roles on the playa is to give art tours to museums, art organizations, city officials, anybody who's a decision maker when it comes to placing public art. So I happened to have someone from the Reno Public Art Committee on one of my tours, and she loved Spread Eagle by Brian Tedrick, and asked me for his contact information. So I said sure, and they ended up commissioning him to do a small eagle for a new development and for that park, for the park and the development. These birds were commissioned by the city to be in a roundabout in Northwest Reno. The artist David Boyer happened to be a Burning Man artist, and he said, "Do you think I could take them out to Burning Man before I install them?" The city loved the idea. Reno Star Thistle. This was created out of、um, scavenged materials that were that had that were from the、uh, Reno Event Center. It was a sculpture that had just not made it, basically. But the materials were in really, really good condition. This is where the story gets really, really cool, I think, because what happened was when the city put out a call for artists, they sent it to us and said they wanted it to go out to Burning Man artists as well. But one of the priorities was that it had to go to Burning Man first. This wonderful, playful puppet, the Ichthyosaur puppet, by local artist Jerry Snyder, is now living in the lobby of the Children's Discovery Museum. This, we got a grant for this beautiful, beautiful butterfly, but at this point we had actually lost the lot, the, the、uh, private lot that we had, to, and so、uh, you know we got the grant. We had, didn't have any place to put it. The city created a permanent pad in downtown Reno on City Plaza, right next to City Hall, for the placement of temporary art. Portal of Evolution by Brian Tedrick is the first sculpture installed there. It's been there for two years, and the city is talking about adding it to their public art collection. We have brought 12 sculptures to Reno since 2007. We've also created community gathering spots. We've even changed, or at least influenced, the special events permit, which now includes a box for fire spinning and flame effects. <laughs> As cultural collaborators, the Burning Man Project brings what we experience for one week in the desert to communities everywhere. We have over 200 regional groups all over the world. Sharing the culture of Burning Man, because together, one community at a time, we can change the world. Thank you.